So, Brother Mark, you come and you tell us how good we are. Okay. Can I sit back down? <laughs> then, Larry we talking about conferences. Our church voted to have one the week after Easter, next uh, of April. Of course, that's all pending on all this stuff, but hopefully uh, we can have a conference. Amen. Amen. Uh, bless that. So I, many uh, conferences, the one that you had here, I used to tell people, if you can't get to Dover, it's one of the best conferences to go to. Uh, it was a blessing the mm -hmm. church had. It. I was always really blessed by it. We thank you for the opportunity tonight to, to preach. I thought Brother Larry was going to preach my message here when he was talking about Moses and that. <laughs> if, I, if you would turn to uh, Matthew chapter 6 and also to Luke chapter 11. And uh, you think about prayer, as Larry had mentioned. And. Uh, The disciples, you know, asked the Lord to teach them mm -hmm. to pray. And we know that that's probably, if you're honest with yourself, one of our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. We don't pray as often as we should. We're praying believing. Mm -hmm. We don't pray with faith. And in Luke 11, 1, he says, and it came to pass that he, as he was praying in a certain place, imagine hearing the Lord pray. Mm -hmm. Here they were hearing him pray. They had heard him no doubt pray. And when he had ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Amen. As John also taught his disciples. You know, we thought, what, what's our purpose for praying? Mm -hmm. I think the number one thing is a closer intimate relationship with God, with mm -hmm. our Father. I think that we sometimes just repeat our prayer and we don't wait to just listen. And as I was thinking about some of the times in my life when I really knew I had to get a hold of the Lord, and uh, one of those times was my brother who has been saved now for well, over 20 years now. I remember, he was a long time member there, Home Baptist Church. And uh, then my dad called me and he said, You need to go talk to your brother Jim. We didn't have any kind of relationship, me and Jim didn't. I mean, there was almost 10 years between us, or nine years at least. And uh, hey, that's a big gap when you're a child growing up. Yeah. And uh, we just had separate lives. And the fact, too, that they were older when my dad was saved. Jim was 16, and my other brother was already uh, 19. And the Lord saved my, my dad. And so he raised two boys in church and two outside of church. Hmm. And anyway, my dad called me from Florida, and he said, you need to go talk to your brother. And you just need to go talk to him. And I said, he's had a tough time told me some of the reasons, and I said, Dad, he's not going to talk to me. I've been to his house before, and he just talked to me on the porch. He's not going to. And I got off the phone, and Deb said, what's up? And I said, uh, i got to go talk to my brother. Dad wants me to go talk to my brother. And she even said, that's going to be useless. You know? <laughs> and uh, so I went in the bedroom, and I got down on my knees in the bed, and I started to pray. Man. And really, I was asking the Lord, almost in my mind, just... How am I going to get out of this world? I can't, you know, that's my thought as I was really mm -hmm. praying. And I was praying, and it was just like the Lord saying, What are you doing? What are you doing? Get up and go. Mm -hmm. Get up and go. And I just thought, and I, I tried to pray some more, and it was like, Get up and go. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, you know, it wasn't audible, but it was so strong. Right. I come back out of the bedroom, and just, well, you didn't pray very long, and I said, I got to go. I just went out and got in the car and I left. I had no idea what I was going to see when I came to my brother's house. And I, as he opened the door, there were tears in his eyes. And I was shocked to see my brother, who was 47, 48 then, 
the tears in his eyes and he just said, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I don't think I've been in his house maybe once or twice before that. And you know what the end result was that day? The Lord saved him. Amen. Yeah. We were on our knees in the living room floor at his house. Amen. The Lord saved him. You know, when we think about our reason for prayer, well, there's, I think, more than one reason because the Bible teaches that. And that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. Not just ultimately, number one is our relationship with the Lord, but the Lord wants us to bring our needs and our desires and commune Amen. with Him and pray with Him. You know, in Matthew chapter 6, it's interesting in that in verse 5, He said, Without well, interest into, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Brother Lynn at our church has a stairway he gets in. Mm -hmm. You know, he just tries to get off by himself. And enter into thy, thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. Amen. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they're that they should be rewarded for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Amen. After this man, therefore pray. So then it goes on what many people call the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the Free Methodist Church and we literally almost might as well say we chanted it. You know, <laughs> let's say the Lord's Prayer. You know? Our Father which art in heaven, you know, and I had that memorized as a child. And it's contrary to what he just said not to do. <laughs> right. Now, pray after vain repetitions. Right. And, and so repeating that is a vain repetition. But go back to uh, Luke chapter 11 there. And in verse 1, it says, They said, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, <laughs> When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And that's where they get, well, it says, say this. No, it doesn't mean say these exact words. He said, right. pray to your heavenly Father. Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins so that we may also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come unto me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are in, with me in bed. I cannot rise to give thee. And I say unto you, though he will not rise and give because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And if a son ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Amen. The disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And I want you to know, notice here, that Christ, after he gave them the outline here in Luke, he gives them an example of persistence mm -hmm. in prayer. He uses this where it says in verse 5, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at mid midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. Come to my house at midnight, I'm probably not going to get up. <laughs> right. <laughs> my wife's favorite thing, she never forgets this, is that, you know, Brother Titus said one time, he says, you know, if my wife wanted a candy bar at 3 a.m., I would get up and get dressed and go get it for her. <laughs> and I said, you know why he could say that? 
And she, I said, because she loved him enough, she would never ask him. <laughs> she loved my answer. But you know, getting up at midnight is not easy. Right. And you're in bed, and you know, and I mean, I was at Larry's house, and Donna said, Brother Carter's out there hollering, you need something, Larry. Larry's like, <laughs> it's midnight. Well, you know, he's probably crazy. <laughs> but he was just, he's not getting up. And it says there, it says, a friend of mine is coming, I have nothing to set before him. And he said, he that from wind shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. And I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Amen. Yet because of his importunity or his persistence, not because he's a friend, but he's saying there, he's teaching them how to pray, and he's basically saying, don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. I'm sitting there thinking in the pew, you know, most of you probably don't know how, you know much about our daughter, but our daughter was very, very sick at one time. Written off, really, by doctors. And just said, you know, there's nothing anybody can do. Hmm. And I prayed an awful lot. Amen. Lord Taylor. It didn't happen for years. It was a slow process. But I look at where she's at today. There's an answer to prayer. Amen. It's an answer to prayer. Yet because of his importunity or persistence, he will arise and give him what he needs. And he goes on and says, and I say, you ask and it shall be given you. And she's so telling them to ask. He's telling them to, you know, to pray to your father and to ask for forgiveness for your sins and your debts and and uh, give us your daily, give us what we need. But then he goes on and says, don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. He says, he goes and uses that example. If you, you know, I remember working with a friend of mine and we, he had a son that was probably at the time like for three. And we were doing an addition on his house. And, you know, guys, we just get to work it. We just get to work it. And, uh, you know, and this son was sitting there, you know, we're giving him stuff to play with, nails, you know, so he can, whack himself and build stuff and just keep out of our, our hair. You know, we're, we're getting started at work at six in the morning and, you know, we hadn't even stopped. You know, we're just drinking, you know, coffee and Cokes and we're not even stopped. And then about 3, 3.30, all of a sudden, you know, the son says, Dad, I'm hungry. And we both stopped. And we said, we hadn't fed him. <laughs> you know? And we both just dropped everything. Well, we're going to get some meat, you know? And so, I mean... You know, one longer poem, more cereal, milk, and you know, say, hey, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, when he says, Dad, I'm hungry. Right. I mean, when we go to the Heavenly Father, and he says, if you think being evil know how to give good gifts to you unto your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father right. give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You think about the widow and the unjust judge. Look, in, look over chapter 18, because that's the same principle. Amen. The Lord is teaching. He says in verse 1 of Luke 18, he says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. My biggest problem is I, I faint in my faith. Mm -hmm. I'll keep praying, but my faith in the answer to it dwindles. Mm -hmm. And don't quit. Don't quit believing. God is teaching us not to give up on our prayers. When he said, teach us to pray, he says, let me tell you how to pray. But he says, let me tell you don't give up on it. Amen. It says in this parable of the unjust judge, he says, saying there was a certain, in a city, a, a, a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, mm -hmm. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, she weary me. <laughs> Amen. Just like the man said, I got no bread. Larry, I got no bread. Can you give me some bread? And finally, Donna says, would you go ahead and give him some bread? So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> give him something. Send him on his way. And here's this, I, I, don't, I don't fear anybody. I don't believe in God. I, but this woman is troubling me, saying, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Right. And he says, hear what the unjust judge said. Look at verse 7. Shall not God 
So shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. And he says, I tell you, he will. <laughs> I tell you that he will. He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, the Son of Man, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Right. And that's where my problem is, is my faith. Uh, I, I, I can pray, but sometimes my, my faith in my prayer dwindles. You know, and then I think, how often do we pray? You know, even under basically threat of death, Daniel still prayed three times a day. Right. He found Amen. the time to pray. And, you know, I heard uh, many stories when I was younger about Brother Turner. And uh, most of you here probably never heard that name. But I heard all sorts of stories about this preacher. He was the one that was uh, Brother Jones' preacher. Brother Jones, you know, uh, you know, was one of those that uh, talked about him a lot. But I heard many stories about him. But one that I heard that stayed with me is that, that somebody would say, you know, you could be just walking along with Brother Turner and you begin to share a, a burden or something that you might have in your life. And he would just stop. It didn't matter where it was at, sidewalk, you know, store, gas station, wherever he's at, and just say, let's pray. <clears throat> Amen. Let's pray. And I guess he had this deep, baritone voice, and he would just, you know, just blasted it out there and would just pray. And everybody that I ever knew said, Oh, Brother Turner was a man of prayer. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I don't think that would be said of me, which is a shame. But when you think about why should we pray, well, Larry touched on it. Can we change the future? Why did Moses beseech God? Right. But he said, well, isn't he a sovereign God? Absolutely, God is sovereign in all things. Right. Amen. Does it mean we can change his mind? I believe that the Bible says that we can, our prayer have an effect. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Amen. Amen. Much. Amen. Why would God even have the, the and tell him to, tell? but he said, teach us to pray. Then he says, be persistent. <coughs> if you mm -hmm. got a need. If you got a need, you be persistent in it. Be persistent in it. You know, I like what uh, Spruill said about this. He said, through our prayers, no, excuse me, though our prayers do not change God's mind, he ordains prayer as a means to accomplish his will. Amen. I, I thought, that's pretty good. But at the same token, I don't know that, you know, you can't say that, you know, say that God didn't necessarily change his mind when the people made a golden calf and uh, they were dancing around it and everything. And after they made their golden calf in Exodus 32, and nine, the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Right. He said, get out of the way, Moses. I'm tired of the day. I'm going to just kill them all. And so it looks like God had his mind made up that he's like, I'm just going to kill them all, Moses. Mm -hmm. And what did Moses do? He prayed. Mm -hmm. Verse Amen. 11 it says, And Moses besought the Lord his God. I mean, that's prayer. He's talking to the Lord and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a, a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief he did bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath. Mm -hmm. He's pleading God to turn from his fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Moses pleads for God to change his plans. Now, ultimately, God knew what was going to happen, right? All right. But he ordained his prayer to have his will. In verse 13, it says, he goes on, he says, remember, Abraham, Isaac, and, thy, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self. And he said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give to your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And then in verse 14 he says, And the Lord repented of the evil which he had thought to do unto this people. I don't know what you can call that, but to me it's like the Lord changed his mind. <laughs> So I'm not going to do it. 
But the Lord obviously knew he wasn't going to do it then. But Moses didn't. Right. Amen. Clearly, it seems that Moses was pleading with God. And God used it to accomplish his will through Moses' prayer. Did he not? Amen. Exactly. He accomplished his will through Moses' prayer. Yeah. We don't know what his will is, do we? That's it. Amen. I was thinking as I studied this, you know what? I prayed. I've been praying a lot. Lord, would just heal Mark Titus. Amen. Right. Amen. You know, and I know he's been, you know, we spent a lot of time together, and he's like, I got to get a lot of things set up. He says, I know God can heal me, but he says, I've got to get, you know, got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this, I got to get this arranged and that arranged in his life. And it's in broken. I'm sitting there thinking, yep, 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 but I want God to heal me. Amen. Now you think about, you know, when they refused to follow this Joshua and Caleb, same thing almost happened. Mm -hmm. They weren't, you know, they didn't go to the promised land and God was angry at them again. And Numbers 14 and 11, he says, And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will thou, how long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have shown unto them, I will smite them with pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of thee a greater and a mightier nation than they, or mightier than they. Yeah. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou hast brought us up this people in thy might from among them. And it will be, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land, for they have heard that the Lord, that thou art Lord, art among his people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by day time in a pillar of cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee shall speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring his people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness, and now I beseech thee. What's that? He's begging in prayer. Amen. Amen. He's begging in prayer. I beseech thee. He's pleading, Let thy power of my Lord. Of, of my Lord be great according as he has spoken. The Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy, as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned. Listen to this. According to thy word. Amen. Explain that. Mm -hmm. God is sovereign, but he says, I will do it according as you have prayed. Right. Amen. And Abraham, he pleaded for Sodom, did he not? He, and David, we know, pleaded for the people. And didn't God change his whole mind and plans when Hezekiah was going to die? That's it. In Isaiah 38, 1, Isaiah went to, in the days of Hezekiah, was sick unto death. He says he was, he was dying. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Pretty clear. Mm -hmm. Right. Prophet comes to you and says, get things in order. That's it. Get things in order, for you're going you're gonna to die and not live. And Hezekiah, he's obviously in bed sick. He turns his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Right. And said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, I'll have walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Doesn't sound like he prayed for a year. Doesn't say he had a year. Doesn't say he had, you know. But he turned his face to the wall and he wept and he thought, Lord, I don't want to die yet. Hmm. And then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go to Hezekiah, go say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the, the God of David thy father. And listen to this. I have heard thy prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have seen thy tears. The Lord doesn't. It is his elect he hears. Mm -hmm. He hears his elect. He sees Amen. the tears. He sees the things. It may not happen in a year or two. 
or you know in four days or but the Lord has his time but he says I have seen thy tears behold I will add unto thy days 15 years he's adding to it I mean you know first of all it tells us in the Bible and that if we serve the Lord, the children, if you honor your, your father and mother, that he's going to add days to you. That's right. Amen. I mean, that's a promise that he says, I'll add days. And so he, Hezekiah's prayer here, he added unto him 15 years. Doesn't the word tell us, as we said, that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much? Amen. He says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be what? Healed. Mm -hmm. Healed. Amen. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God can heal any. He can raise the dead. That's it. Amen. And Brother Darren told me years ago about a funeral where this, you know, they were all acting bodies embalmed. And I know that I know that God could raise that, but you have to be understanding that God has chosen sometimes mm -hmm. not to answer our prayer. That's it. But there are two words here that this that it says effectual and availeth. He says, when you think about these words, effectual meaning that we can have an effect. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. Effectual. And availeth meaning we can, by this practice of prayer, overcome or be successful or gain by it. Yeah. That's what it availeth means that we might be able to attain that, that answer to prayer. So when we think about what he said, Lord, teach us to pray. The Lord taught him how not only to pray, but he taught him to pray earnestly, believing. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we go back there and look at Luke chapter 11, and he says there, it came to pass as he was in a certain place, when he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. He said unto them, Pray ye, saying, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. So on earth, you know, we're to pray, we're to pray to our heavenly Father. Pray for our needs. He said, Give us this day our daily bread. You know what? If God didn't see fit, we would none of us have what we need. Amen. He supplies our every need, does he not? You're right. Amen. And forgive us our sins, and we for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Would you be having that? A friend shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. I like this if you think about it. He says, Lend me three loaves. He says, for a friend of mine in his journey has come unto me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, and I cannot rise and give thee. And I say unto you, though he will not rise to give them, because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, yet because of his persistence, he wasn't going away. Amen. He's out there hollering. He's saying, help me. Let me in. I need help. I just need three loaves of bread. I just need three loaves of bread. And he says, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many mm -hmm. as he needeth. Amen. Give him as many as he needeth. And then he goes on and says, and I say, and he ask, and what? It. It shall be given. Right. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Mm -hmm. He that seeketh, findeth. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And if a son shall ask, ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? For he asketh fish. For will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the 
Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. Amen. You know, when we think about praying, you know, when we pray to our Heavenly Father, and I remember when the Lord truly saved me, I had no doubt prayed before that. Didn't, the prayers didn't go anywhere until I finally prayed and asked the Lord to save my soul. Amen. But I heard a lot of people pray. But when after the Lord saved me, I began to listen to other people pray. Not that I could copy them, <clears throat> but just like the disciples, I wanted to learn how to pray. Mm -hmm. For the first time in my life, I wanted to really learn how to pray. How to pray to my Heavenly Father. Look in closing here, we'll look over at uh, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, Jesus said there in verse 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. Amen. Look at that. I mean, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty unlimited, isn't it? Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. What I remember hearing and learning that... <clears throat> I remember hearing people praying in Jesus' name. It's, you know, and sometimes we get in the habit of, habit of just praying and we'll say, and we get to the end of our prayer and we say, in Jesus' name, amen. We realize what that means. Right. The power of bringing Jesus' name into our prayer. Right. right. We're praying to our Heavenly Father and the right. Son of God says, when I hear my name invoked, he says, what shall ever ye shall ask in my name that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And look at verse 14. If she shall ask anything, this verse of Saul says whatsoever, and then he says verse 14, if she shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then I look at that and I think, I told Mark Titus, I thought about preaching this at our church Wednesday night, but the Lord just didn't give me the leadership to do it. I guess he wanted it for tonight. But I said, Mark, I said, I think I'm going to preach on prayer. We were driving to Vanderbilt, and and, uh, and I kind of went over this with him. And, you know, and, he, and I know he's basically saying, I, I believe that. I believe that, Mark. But he says, I have to, I have to set my house in order. And I said, Well, Mark, I understand that. But I said, I'm going to pray like Hezekiah that you get hey, yours. That you need more years. Amen. Amen. Not just six months, because you know, we talked about the conference and he just said, I hope I make it to it. I hope I'm there. I hope I'm healthy and able to go. And I said, I hope that there's you know four or five conferences you attend. Amen. Maybe fifteen. You know, I mean we're why God says you know, I mean he was gonna destroy all his people and Moses pleaded, he said, Okay, I won't. Wow. Amen. Hezekiah turned to the wall, and it sounds like he prayed one prayer, wept and prayed, and God said, go, Isaac, go back there and tell him. I've heard that prayer. I've seen Amen. the tears. I'm going to give you 15 more years. He was going to die. The Lord is able, but he uses our prayers. He uses our prayers. When the disciples says, teach us to pray, the Lord didn't just say, repeat after this. He gave a wonderful example of persistence in prayer. And that the Lord would, through that persistence, answer our prayers. Amen. You know, I don't know it doesn't answer every prayer because every prayer sometimes the Lord has a different will, different plan, but he, he wanted to put that thought there in them as he said, they said, teach us to pray. That was just as much more, that was that was more of his teaching them to pray than the outline of the prayer. Right. Teaching them to be persistent and believe yeah. that God and that God loves them and wants to answer their prayer. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Amen. Amen. Pray believing and thank God. Don't quit. Pray for Mark Titus. Pray for him that the Lord Amen. would heal him. I was sitting there thinking, you know, I'm waiting for this <coughs> PET scan and I thought I would love to see that thing come back just right. Amen. Not a black dot on it. And Amen. Then, and I prayed as I prayed, I said, Lord, I will praise your name. Amen. For the healing of him, because Amen. there won't be any doubt. Amen. After all those 13 spots all over it, 
if you just wiped them all off there and they just stood there with their chins hanging down and said, only God could do that. Amen. Only God could do that. That's exactly right. By the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. Give God and glory for it. Amen.